lockdown. Um, hairier and more dishevelled than ever. I am clean though. Um, I am still managing to keep personal hygiene standards up despite living alone during lockdown. Um, just on uh, my lunch from work, um, it's a good week. We've been told that um, I can, well, we can get out and do some fishing on Wednesday, social distancing permitted. Um, businesses can't open, so some of the commercials won't be able to open and the tackle shops and whatnot probably won't be able to open. Um, but uh, that's not what the video is going to be about today, although hopefully um, I will get a video out this week. I'll get out and get a proper fishing video because I think there is definitely some places I know of where I can fish socially distanced and safely. Uh, and we're now permitted to, so I'm well happy about that. I'm absolutely ecstatic, in fact. So, um, yeah, anyway, so the, what I want to show you today is some uh, mini method feeders made from raw plug sockets. So uh, I've not actually seen these before. Um, well, I've seen um, not raw plug sockets, plasterboard sockets. I've obviously seen them because, um, well, this whole room is clad in plasterboard um, and you need them for attaching things and whatnot. Um, so they make quite good little feeders. Um, I've made a, made some already for a little test. Uh, that's that's one there. That's like a free running one, uh, just with an eye and a swivel. And got a uh, line through one there. Um, and yeah, they they look great. They hold the pellets well. I'll put a, I'll put a little picture up of that now. Um, they hold the pellets well though, um, and I think they'll be great. They're only small. They're quite light, made like of a pewter alloy. Alloy, I think. So they would be no good. Um, in fast flowing water unless you put an inline lead on it as well but there's no reason why you couldn't and the plastic ones that I've seen made on YouTube do suggest doing that so um, let's have a look right guys so let's um, have a look at what we're going to need um, it's pretty pretty simple stuff actually um, so you want you obviously want your plasterboard plugs um, I was already made uh, plas yeah plasterboard sockets or raw plug things um, there, these are metal ones. They've got like a little point at the end, and that gets snipped off. Although I did have a thought you could possibly leave that on, and if you know, I don't know if that would form some sort of anchor point, um, especially if you were on sort of a gravelly, not too fast a to flowing water. Um, you're going to need something to cut stuff with. So I've got a little hacksaw there, some snippers, um, some little plastic tubes to make the line through channel. Um, that that is from a biro pen. Um, just uh, chopped up. I've like Capri Sun straws would probably work, or the tube off a WD forty can. Um, you can get stuff on eBay. They do three mil um, tubes on eBay straws for like a couple of quid. So um, I've ordered a few of them just to have a play with for a few other line through bits I've got in mind, and maybe even float making. Um, yeah, little scalpel there. Uh, some epoxy resin. So I'm using. Milliput because it's really easy to use. It's like a plasticine sort of thing. And shout out to Phil, um, who, who goes on our lads' week holiday. He put me onto that um, for filling um, some some of the sort of bits on a float. Um, and it's great. It dries really light, but it's super strong. I was amazed at how strong it dries. So that's brill. Um, uh, I mean, a bit of super glue. Um, what never goes amiss. And then if you um, if you haven't got milliput, you could definitely just use a two-part epoxy, um, like an araldite, which um, I have got, but for some reason it's not on my uh, workbench there. Um, so let's get going. Right, um, just to chop the end of what I should have said as well, what you need is a um, little file. I've just got a little file or a big one, to be honest. It's, it doesn't need to be finesse. Um, so take your... Take your socket and uh, you just want to get it now roughly into the shape that you want it and that's chopping off that end bit. It's got a hole right through the middle. So that should be fine. I'm just going to use these side cutters. Uh, they're nice ones. And uh, and it's really sort of quite a soft alloy so that's come off. And then what you want to do is just file file that down just to, I mean, it's, to be honest, it's actually all right. There's a tiny burr just there but when we're talking nothing it's quite a soft metal some of these can be sharp sort of the actual screw corkscrew blades but this these ones not very sharp at all to be honest well it's not sharp it might be worth just just having a just to lightly have a look if there are any burrs on it and running a bit of emery paper or the file just to take any little burrs off while you're working with it you wouldn't want to um catch your fingers on any and also you know, any little sharp bit like that could potentially uh, cut your line, especially if you're using something like 
feeder braid that could just just get a braise on a little bar burr with repeated retrievals or something like that so just get that filed down and uh and i'm going to do the same to the other three right so um first things first i'm going to going to make the start the line through ones first and then show you making the um the eyes for the sort of the free running ones um so first get your get your tube make sure it fits obviously and once you've chopped the end off so that that goes through it's not a very tight fit so um you will need to glue it in place and then i'm going to pack it out with the uh, the milliput um epoxy resin um you can obviously use our diet or non-branded stuff in the pan shop which i've got some kicking about actually uh not handy obviously um so i'll 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 get these two glued in and then they'll sit um and set which won't take very long with this super glue and then um i'll uh, go on to show you making the eyes for the uh free running ones so the actual i'm just gluing it at the this end because this is just where the the tube sits actually touching center um, but you can center it up after using the, the millipot I found. So um, I don't think there's any super glue left in this after all that. No, there is. So just a, a, a double. And then you want to put your tube through. And what what I've done there is stupidly blocked the end up, so that needs to be picked out with a kebab skewer. You can see that's blocked up there. Right, that one that was the first one done. I'm picked and glue. That's just setting now. Um, I've left. I've deliberately left the tube long, so it gives you a little bit to work with, and you can always trim it after. It's, it's just cutable by scissors. Um, so I'll what I'm going to do for this one actually, and what I should have probably done. I think with the first one to test is if I double the glue on after the tubes in, then there's no danger of clogging up the end um, so that's it um, that's that uh, glued on um, uh, after the tube was put in um, obviously be careful with super glue you don't want to glue your fingers together um, so they can be left to set now it, uh, it's just a dribble just like a tiny drop really it's not to not to lock it in place permanently the the, the resin will do that and if you're using arrow diet you probably don't need the super glue at all that will hold it but because I'm using this milliput it's much more firm like plasticine and so it'll be pushing the tube everywhere so this just I found was a lot easier when I first tested this and it's just to tack that tube in place and it's, it's quick setting so it doesn't take very long um, and and so it gives me some time to do the eyes on the um, on the, the free running ones as well. Well in true budget angler style I obviously um, neglected to um, tell you at the start in the things I listed and what you need is you'll need a couple of swivels or at least one swivel if you're making one and I've got stainless steel florist wire here for making the eyes. You could probably use a paper clip or some some malleable bit of wire. Um, you could probably even get away with um, copper wire, especially if you're not using it in salty water and you you know don't leave it. It shouldn't corrode too badly. But this is this is your best bet. A bit of stainless steel. You know it's not going to rust. And uh, I mean this was like three quid for a good few meters and stuff on eBay. It's 0.8 mil florist wire and I've been using it to make loads of eyes and stuff for floats. Um, so it's slightly different to the, to making a float eye in as much that it's only a single loop just because you want to attach a swivel as well. Um, so I'll show you that now. Right, so th put, put one of your swivels on, on the on the eye. Um, this looks really close to you but it's actually really far away from me so excuse me if this looks a bit uh, cack-handed. Um, and so I'm trying, I mean, I've got a really long bit of wire, overly long to be honest. Um, and so basically you want to just create a, just create the first loop. Um, and you just want to bring that around itself. You don't need it to be very big, um, to be honest, just to, just so just to allow the swivel to, uh, to, you know, be attached and swivel, swivel on. And then you might want to get a little pair of pliers and of course me being me I haven't got any handy I'm gonna delicately use these snips um, without cutting through it just if you want you you do actually want two twists because you don't want that swivel to slip back down 
so um, that's what you get there and then you can then just trim trim the ends so um, which I might as well just do depending on what you're whipping this to uh, it will, will make a difference how long you leave the leave the ends there um, I'm using hardwood dowel um, lolly sticks if that all doesn't like there you go uh, hardwood dowel lolly sticks um, like toffee apple sticks got these on eBay I've got loads of stuff on eBay actually they're probably bamboo actually not looking at the end grain of that not I don't know what they are I'm sure it said they were hardwood but anyway they're they seem really dense and tough so I think they'll they'll take the punishment um, but yeah right so what what I do is much easier to whip these on before you attach it to the to the actual feeder which I found um, to my detriment um, trying to do that it was really annoying um, so I know I've known no for now that it's easier just to uh, whip this out whip this on and and of course another thing I probably said you should have should have said you needed to call something to whip the eye on if you are making the free running on I might have said that I don't can't remember but so I'm gonna whip that on now and do my best to try and show you me doing that right let's have a go at this whipping so I've got it all pinched in my fingers this wire is actually quite a bit stiffer than I thought and it's not that easy to pinch but once we get a few turns of this super strong thread that will hold it nicely so a couple of turns first sort of gripping its oh I've got it caught in a camera tripod uh, that's better a um, couple of turns first getting it gripped on that first two turns and then gripping the tail I run the tail along the metal just to because you know you're definitely getting it because if it runs along the wood it could get in that little gap because it's quite a thick um, thick bit of white could get in that gap there um, which this isn't even just there uh, right then once you've got plenty of turns you want to cut the cut the tail off sorry I'm going out of shot here. I'm looking over the top of the camera I normally do this much closer I think I might be is it long or short sighted I have to hold things quite close to my face to see them um, I don't know if that's normal to be honest but um, yeah or doing this over the top of the camera uh, not easy right okay sorry sorry about that god <laughs> uh, I'm just smashing up the other projects I got on the go there you can see some floats in the background um right so keep going just be careful when you get to the end of the wire um you can give them a little file because when you snip them with the side cutters you can end up with like a little sharp blade right so a few turns down the stick and then I'm just going to cut it and then to finish so I've cut cut off the the end off the spool leave myself enough and then I put in a little loop of thread which is like the draw thread there are proper videos for whipping if you look at Graham Pinkerton's float hut he does a really good one on whipping a goose quill and that's where that's effectively what I learned I think it was that one it might be on his Facebook page but that was the video that showed me how to whip stuff um, and yeah it's great fun actually I've probably done too much on here but let's see you can just sort of cinch it all up with your thumbnail uh, make sure you don't leave any gaps so it looks all nice and neat and pass this end back through the loop Hope you're getting all this yeah and then this is that's it pull it through pull it tight and then the scalpel nick that off nice and neatly which I hadn't been doing in previous videos because I was only using scissors and there you go um, that is the that is the eye for your free running. That'll all get nicely varnished because it will be varnished and glued. You could even varnish it before it goes into the um, goes into the uh, feeder. To be honest, um, that that wouldn't be a problem. Um, but I want to. I'm not going to do that because I want to show you um, just show you how I actually shape the end to go into the feeder. Um, so I'll do that now. 
Um, so once you've once you've got it whipped on, you want to um, you want to trim it down. Um, you can use a little hacksaw or whatever. I'm just gonna I'm gonna snip this with these side cutters um, and just leave yourself. It's about it doesn't go all the way in, so I'm giving myself a bit more here. But what I can do is is trim it again. But this is just um, so it can get shaped, and I'll show you I'm doing that with just a little just a little something I picked up. So that's that snipped. Right, what I've got here is a chuck from a drill. Now, you don't have to use one of these. I mean, you probably have got a drill. This is actually a chuck on its own, and this is going to make the tailstock of a lathe that I've ordered, um, a tiny little battery-powered lathe, and it apparently doesn't come with a decent tailstock. So I'm hoping this isn't going to be overkill for it because it's pretty massive, but it was only cheap on eBay. And what I found is that if you just use, you can just crush the, crush the wooden, just tighten that up. I mean, if it's the one with a chuck key, just use the key, and just because um, it's a you know it's wood, it's just not as forgiving as the metal. It shapes it like that, just dents it in. Um, and if you just sort of you know do the end like that and give it a good pinch, and then there you go. That's much smaller. Um, it's not quite a four point. It's like a almost triangular now. Um, and uh, that'll go, he says, should go into the, like that. And so that's really tight fit. You can glue that in with a bit of epoxy or um, super glue again, and that will hold tight. And then you just pack the rest out with the, um, the epoxy resin or whatever you're using, and, um, and you're good to go. This is actually a little bit tight, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to, um, off camera, it's going to get boring if you just see me squashing a bit of wood. So I'm going to get that shaped in and nice, and then come on to actually seating it and and trimming it. Because obviously we don't need all this at all. This is going to be almost to the whipping. So I'll get that sorted now. Right, that's uh, that's it. Um, I've just I've just squashed it down. I've just nicked a couple of slithers off with a uh, sharp Stanley knife. Um, it worked better for some reason using the chuck, and I think I might actually use one on the drill, not this one, um, which is why it hasn't squashed it as well. It's not as tough, or um, well, maybe I didn't squeeze it as tight, but I've just put a little double of super glue in there. That gets jammed in nice and tight, um, and I'll do I'll do the same with the other one. I'll whip, whip an eye on the lolly stick, and we'll be away, and then we'll get onto the next stage. Right, so they're they're glued now. There's there's one. Um, and that's the line through. I'm going to mix up the milliput now. That's uh, it's two two parts. It comes in a little cardboard box. This is the standard colour. Um, it's like a, it sort of goes like a green colour. It's like a grey and a, a green, like a Shrek colour green. It comes in two little plastic bags, um, two sausages of the stuff, and you break off or tear off equal parts, and then mix it um, for five minutes it says and it's like plasticine it's amazing stuff and it dries so strong and so hard i made like a little i just had some left over and i made a few little sort of shapes and they were almost impossible to break um you know really really um really tough stuff and it doesn't doesn't dry that dense i think if you added some like um tungsten filings or something i bet you could use this to make weights as well um i think i'm gonna have a little play about with making some little uh drop shot weights because I only use five gram ones a lot of the time, and I reckon I could easily make some five gram ones that maybe look a little bit more natural. Um, and so, yeah, it does stick to your fingers a bit, but it before it sets, it washes off with water. So you just keep working at your fingers, and then I'll show you how I'm going to sort of pack it into the uh, the little feeders just to just to um, secure them all. Really secure the the eye and the tube. Well, just the tube really, to be honest. The eye is pretty secure, but I'll add a little bit in just for a little bit of extra density, um, to be honest. So I'll start with the line through one. I'm going to try, I'm, I'm trying to do this over the camera, so apologies. Uh, again, so you want to you want to basically work little balls of it down the side of the tube until it's full up and you'll know it's full because it will start coming out of the the sides here. It takes three or four hours to dry this stuff, so you haven't got to rush. Take your time, and just like a dentist would fill out a filling, you just want to you just want to pack it in. And I tried it the other way by putting it in first, then trying to put the tube through, and that just I just couldn't get it neat enough. So I think this is probably the best way 
of doing it and then you can just use both ends of a of a kebab skewer um and uh and just sort of use it to sort of tamp it all down so i'm gonna try and show you that now i don't know whether this will come out but we shall see Just sort of work it in. If you, you see, if you do it evenly on sort of each side as well, rather than just all down one side, because you don't want to sort of pack it all down one side, and because this is only tacked in with a little bit of super glue, um, and then this is all. It is going in, believe it or not. Yeah, there you go. Just keep working it in nice and gently. Um, there might be better ways of doing this. If anyone's got any ideas, I mean, you could probably inject some inject injector glue in there, um, or sort of draw it in. Um, but I mean, this works, and it's just about experimenting, really, isn't it? Just having a bit of fun. I mean, someone uh, explained to me how they how they do this. And I think this is what he meant. Um, when he said how he'd do it, and I had a look on eBay, on uh, eBay, on um, YouTube, and they weren't, they were, I couldn't see anyone doing any metal ones, so um, there's nothing like this, right, that's about all I can do from looking over this camera. Um, so I'm going to finish these off and then show you, it's going to be much the same for the, uh, the um, free running ones as well. Right, that's that one done, and as you can see I've just sort of moulded some, it's picked up a bit of dirt there, Moulded some round the um, round the end, and then that can just be trimmed down and sanded. Same with that end as well. That can all be, all you see. There's like a, there are a few little extra little bits where that can all be taken off once it's started to set. In a few hours' time, you can just um, rub them off with a uh, little bit of emery paper, and it, they tidy up quite nicely. Um, I'll show you one. And then what I did, just because the green looks a bit odd, I just coloured it in with a bit of black ink. But if you can do what you like. To be honest, the whole thing might look better black. Um, that's a that is a bit of black tube in there anyway. Um, so yeah, that's 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 the finished article. Um, they're not pretty, but they are functional. So they definitely work um, in terms of getting pellets to the bottom. Um, I've had a little play with them in a in a bowl. Uh, hopefully this week I'll get out and try them. Anyway, on to the uh, on to the free free running ones now. Um, same sort of principle, though, is you've got less gap there, but you have got a nice big open end then. So what you can do is just feed in little thin sausages and then pack it down. So uh, I'll have a go at that now. So I rolled a thin sausage of it there. Yeah, pack then you can just use your skewer or if you've got a cocktail stick saying a bit thinner that goes in. yeah just get it all in pack it all down to the bottom and repeat to be honest you probably can't see it in there but yeah so I'll continue with those um, and that really is it then guys to be honest um, once they're done, what I'll do is I will just give them a uh, few coats of varnish just to glue the whip in really, waterproof it, um, waterproof the wood, look like what I do with the eye of a float, which some there, all hanging up ready, um, a few whip, ornate whipping processes. But yeah, they, these are the feeders. Um, hopefully that's been useful for you. Um, it's just a little, little hack. They're only light little things. I mean, if you're down a little runs water commercial it's full of pasties um getting some pellets at the bottom really is just all you want to do and i think these will work great you know um somewhere like that especially you know if you've got kids that are chucking them all over the place you know you know you can spend anything from like a pound to four or five quid for a expensive branded method feeder even a light one so um yeah i think i think these are you know definitely in keeping with the budget angler and i'm really pleased with how it turned out so do have a go guys let me know how you get on and if you've got any other hacks or makes for me i'd really love to hear them because i'm really getting into this sort of 
making stuff. Um, although hopefully I'll be out fishing a lot more and we can get back to a normal service of uh, dodgy canal fishing videos. So thanks for watching and um, yeah. Well, hopefully that was useful for you. Um, I've been, you know, they're, as I was just saying there, they're good fun and, and easy to make. So um, I'm going to get tidied up now. That was all done really in an hour. Back to work now, back to the coronavirus helpline. And um, I'll catch you on the next one. So cheers for watching, guys. Fish on. <laughs>